Hey everybody, welcome to another Off The Shelf Board Game Review. This week we're looking at Warhammer Quest, a Silver Tower, a Dungeon Crawler. Now wait, before you run off screaming into the night like I just said, another zombie board game, what if I told you this was a Dungeon Crawler that's 100% cooperative? Okay, okay, yeah, I know you're still running off in the night like I said the word zombies again, but what if I told you it was a cooperative game where you can actually vary the player count? Now like the cheesy standard where it's four heroes versus the world, and if you're only playing with two players, you can split up the heroes. If you're playing with three heroes, Gotta do this awkward split up where one player controls two and everybody else controls one hero. What if I told you it actually plays from two to four players and actually plays pretty darn well from those various player counts? And the game is actually balanced that way. What if I told you this game was actually a game that has a quest line? What if I told you this game is going to play differently every time you play through the eight quests to complete the entire quest line? What if I dropped the stupid what if shtick and actually told you what Warhammer Quest truly is? See, Warhammer Quest is a cooperative dungeon crawling game that has some very interesting mechanics almost some slight euro mechanics that's going to play differently every single time you play the game because every time you play the game yeah you're going to have your standard little game where you're going to get this rule book that's going to tell you how to play the game and then you're going to get this adventuring book which is going to have random encounters ensuring that every time you play the game it's going to play very very differently just depending on how these random encounters come out and without giving any spoilers there's lots of random encounters here, ensuring that's going to play differently every single time. There's also some cool things about this game, because every time you explore these certain tiles, you're going to have different encounters, but the way these tiles are going to be laid out is going to be different every single time you play the game. Sometimes when you encounter this tile, it may be the way it divides. The next time you encounter this tile, it may be the flame keepers having a different thing that's going to be on the board. Sometimes this could be overwhelmed. Sometimes you may see that it's going to be the spore cave giving you a totally different encounter based on just how the adventure happens to be going. Not only that, the, the game, like I said, is balanced for various player accounts because the amount of enemies you're going to encounter is based on the amount of players, different heroes that the players will be playing every time you play the game. And that's another cool thing about Warhammer Quest. The game does come with six heroes in the game, and every one of these heroes has played differently. And the kind of the cool thing is it doesn't fit with the stupid standard tropes of we got a fighter, we got a cleric, we got a wizard, we got a rogue, let's all do our standard things that we're going to do every time we play the game. No, these heroes are slightly, ever slightly different. So you have the Mistweaver, which may be kind of your wizardly type because they do throw things and nuke it and everything like that, but they also do your area control because they can stun everything in the room. You have your priest who controls the very nice griffhound, which can actually do some really cool attacks. Or you actually have some of the other heroes like the fire seeker, the fire slayer, who can do a lot of damage. You have the dark oak chieftain who can do a lot of very cool, interesting things. And you even have the tenebrous shard, who again plays a little bit differently. But the cool thing about this game is you can start pulling in heroes from other games. So let's for, say, for example, you want to bring in the slaughter priest. Because you happen to own the gore chosen game, you can do that if you want to. Let's say you want to bring in the lore master because you happen to own Shadows of a Hammer Hall. You can do that too. You can even bring in the bad guys from those games. Let's just say you want to bring in the lords from the main Age of Sigmar set because you happen to own Age of Sigmar. You can do that too. You can bring in the good guys. You can bring in the bad guys all across games, workshops, fantasy war world from the Age of Sigmar to bring him into this venture to ensure that, again, like I said, this game is never going to play the same way twice. And how Warhammer Quest plays is one of the most interesting things about the game itself. See, yes, the game does use dice, but players will be using the dice to perform actions on the game. And as the player's turn, they're going to roll the dice, and that's going to allow them to spend these dice for various actions. And now your various actions require dice of a minimum size to perform those actions. Some actions, such as exploring new areas and flipping over cards and deciding what the new, next new area on the board is, is just a simple one or higher to perform that action. Or searching or healing are low numbers, but to start performing your special attacks, your special abilities, or your special defenses, such as your area control, or the ability to heal, or other actions are going to require you to start spending higher dice. And the interesting thing on top of that is, as you take wounds, you have less dice available to you to spend. So as players become more wounded, they're going to have less dice to use to perform their actions until they get to the point where they're completely wounded. And the only thing they can do is use the destiny dice to perform their actions. And the destiny dice, like fate itself, can giveth and can also take away. Because the destiny dice are going to add a lot of randomness to the game. Because as these destiny dice are rolled, random things are going to happen. And you're going to see all those random things based on a chart on the back of the book. These random things can be good, but generally they're going to be bad and make your life a little more difficult. But they're going to add to the randomness and ensure the game is not going to play the same way twice when you play the game. The game has a very interesting long campaign storyline where you're trying to reassemble these eight segments of a fragment 
of an ambulance because the summoner is really mad because his optometrist is going to charge him triple because he has three sets of eyes for three sets of glasses. Well, you didn't really think I was going to ruin the storyline for you here, did you? But the storyline is really interesting where you're trying to put this amulet together to defeat this summoner as you're traveling throughout this tower, bringing these heroes together, going through this ever-evolving adventure that's never going to play the same way twice. I've gone through three campaigns of this game. Well, I'm in my third campaign right now. And I can guarantee you it has never been the same way twice. Whether the way these tiles come out, whether the enemies come out differently, or whether we're just experiencing it differently because we decided to bring different heroes through the adventure, the game is played differently every single time it's been played. Now, if you want to learn how to play Warhammer Quest Silver Tower, check out my full tutorial video where I'll show you how to play the game. If you want to just skip that and see the game in action, check out my full gameplay video. Or if you just want to skip all that stuff and find out what I thought about Warhammer Quest, check out my full review, review video for the game. Now, if you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. You can feel free to email me at Off the Shelf Board Game Reviews. That's OTSBGR at gmail.com. Also, if you enjoy this channel and you enjoy the content, you want to help support the channel, throw a dollar in the tip jar over at Patreon. That's patreon.com slash OTSBGR. If you enjoy this content, do you want to see more like it? Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching.